the land of Palestine does not belong to the Egyptians and Syrians and Lebanese who moved there. It belongs to the people God gave it to, which is the nation of Israel. I'm here now to answer your Bible question, and here is one someone has asked. Doesn't God love all people just the same? I don't think a Christian should support Israel's displacement of the Palestinians. What do you think? Let's read that again. I don't think a Christian should support Israel's displacement of the Palestinians. What do you think? What I think doesn't matter much unless it's about knife throwing, and then I know a whole lot. But uh, other than that, uh, I have to be very cautious, especially when it comes to what, what God does and doesn't do. Uh, that's his business. I kind of just tag along. All right, Genesis 17, 7 says this. I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant, he says to Abraham. I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee, that's Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to Joseph to Joseph's 12 sons, the 12 tribes went down to Egypt, came back, 12 tribes of Israel. I will give unto thee, thy seed and thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan had many nations, uh, nation states in it. Uh, for an everlasting possession, uh, an everlasting possession. You know, I've seen situations where someone would die and leave a piece of land to their posterity in per perpetuity. No one could, they couldn't sell it. And uh, <laughs> I know a piece of land like that got so many folks, they uh, didn't know who owned it. I mean, it's just like hundreds of people. And so God says, I'm going to give this land, this, this piece of land, which goes from the Mediterranean up in taking a little bit of all of Lebanon, a little bit of Southern Turkey over into Syria and down close to the uh, Euphrates River, down to Kuwait, and then across over to the river of Egypt. And so it gets a little bit of northern Egypt. So all of that land, all of Jordan, Lebanon, God said, I'm going to give it to my people forever. So God's the one, he's the registrar. He's got these books he keeps. So if you were to go into God's little deeds office, like we got one here in town, and say, mm, let me see, uh, this, this plat of land right here, uh, who does this belong to? And God said, I don't even need to, I don't even need to look at that. That belongs to my people, Israel. I gave it to them for an everlasting possession. <laughs> uh, Leviticus 20, 22, you shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land where thou bring to you to dwell therein, lest the land spew you out, ye shall not walk in the manner of the nations, lest I, that like I cast out before you. For they committed all these things, therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I'll give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which separate you from among other people. So God said, see, the land was occupied at that time by these different nations. And God said, go in and displace them. Uh, annex the whole territory. It's yours. Exodus 34, 24. I'll cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. So they conquered a, a portion of it, but not the whole thing. And God told them that you go and, and, and I'll enlarge your borders. And sometimes they would, they'd reach out in faith and they would conquer out on the peripheries of the land God gave them. He said, I'll enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou goest to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. He told him to go up to the temple. He said, while you're gone, when you leave your farm, you go up to the temple. He said, no one's going to mess with your land. I'll take care of that. Genesis 15, 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, shall serve them. They shall afflict them 400 years. So these 12 tribes ended up in Egypt. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And after they shall come out with great substance, Deuteronomy 4, 26, he said, I will call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon perish from off the land. Oh, wow, man. They're just getting started. They just got in there and just conquered the thing, just trying to get set up, and, uh, get the house all in order. And he said, you're going to soon perish from off this land I gave you. 
I'll scatter you among the nations. And he said, you shall serve other gods, the work of men's hands, wood, stone, which neither see nor hear nor smell. But if thou from thence, where I scatter you to Germany, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Russia, South America, Australia, New York, L.A., I'm going to scatter you. If you from thence you remember the Lord, and seek him with all your heart, with all your soul. When thou art in tribulation, you dispensationalists know about the tribulation, don't you? When thou art in tribulation, and all these things come upon thee, even in the latter days. The tribulation is going to happen in the latter days. He said, when it happens to you, when the children of Israel get in tribulation, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shall be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto thee out of heaven. He made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. So he said, I'm not going to forget the covenant that you're going to inherit the land. There are many, many Old Testament passages that God promises emphatically to the children of Israel, who at the time he's making the promise are in Babylon or Syria, scattered prisoners and captive. He said, I'm going to bring you back to the land. I'm going to restore you to the former glory and more. And he said, nothing's going to change that. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 30, he said, it'll come to pass when these uh, things come upon thee, the blessings and the cursings and so forth, that the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations. going to gather them and bring them back from all these nations where they were in Poland and France and Germany, where the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost parts of heaven, way off in Australia, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee, and the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. That's now called Palestine. You know where the word Palestine comes from? It comes from the word Philistine, P H I L, Philistine, P H I L I S T I N E, Philistine, Palestine. It's the, it, it was the unbelieving Calvinist Arians who named it that and didn't want to call it by the believing name of Israel. It, 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 historically, it was not called that, but they revived that in the last days. The land of the Philistines is what that word means. And yet God says there'll be no more Philistines in the land. So there's a prophecy that won't be God kill them all off. And by the way, they're all dead. There are no living Philistines anymore. They have perished from off the face of the earth, which is confirmed by DNA test as well. The Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and rejoice over thee for good. And he says, I denounce unto you this day, the prophet said, and Moses, you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days upon the land. And he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. The prophet says that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursings. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that I'll give you the land, which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give to them. Finally, this is in first Samuel seven twenty three and 24. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself to make him a name and to do you a great things and terrible for thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations of their gods. For he has confirmed to thyself the people of Israel to be a people unto thee forever. For thou, O Lord, art become their God. They're going to inherit the land. 1947, the prophecy began to be fulfilled and Israel came back from their graves. It says there in Isaiah, bring you back from your graves. They came back from emaciated, some of them weighing less than 100 pounds, 80 pounds, 78 pounds, skinny ribs sticking out. Came back, were handed a stick because the Arabs were attacking at that very moment. And they went out to fight fresh from the concentration camps. There is a, a series called Miracles in Israel, and it uh, goes into the historical events in the last uh, 75 years, as God has one miracle after another, Israel has fought wars outnumbered 20 to one, outgunned, larger land mass, attacked from three different sides at the same time by multiple nations. And yet supernaturally things have happened and God has redeemed them and saved them, and delivered them time and time again. And he will continue to, uh, not that they won't suffer some loss. It's, that's very possible because they have not yet repented but the time is coming when they will. 
And so the land of Palestine does not belong to the Egyptians and Syrians and Lebanese who moved there. It belongs to the people God gave it to, which is the nation of Israel. And so just as God commanded them to displace the people years ago, they should now displace all the people in Palestine and take that land for theirs. That's not my opinion. It's not that I'm not, I, I've been to over there. I have gone in the homes of so-called Palestinians, fine Christian people, nicer than the Jews, <laughs> really nicer than the Jews. I've gone, I've sat down, I've eaten, I had them cook special meals for me. I've eaten with them and uh, I'd love to have them for neighbors, great people, but they're living on somebody else's land. If somebody moves onto your land, a homeless person, they're really nice and they decide they're going to live in your living room and you have a deed to your property, uh, you may have compassion on them, but you are going to say, I need you to leave this property. It's mine. This is for me and my family. We have the deed to this property. And uh, you might uh, go out of your way to provide something else for them. But in the end, it's your land. God gave it to his people forever. And one day, Jesus Christ is going to come back and wipe out the mosque of Omar and the Dome of the Rock and set the temple up right there on that spot. And all the nations of the earth are going to come there to worship. And if they don't, he said, he'll withhold rain from them in a judgment. And so that's the Bible answer to your question. <laughs> 